Hey team, I just want to do a quick video to show you how easy it is to create GitHub Actions now that we've got ChatGPT. And you know, as you'd expect, it's dead simple. And it's really easy to understand, but why write all that YAML when you don't have to? Let's have a look. The GitHub Action that I want to create is for this repository. I've already done it, but I'm going to show you how I did it. The reason I'm bringing up the repository is to explain what it's for, give you some context. So as you can see, this just has a readme file and this update script, which we can look at briefly. And it lists a bunch of people's names. These are actually links to YouTube channels. And then it's got the number of subscribers next to each channel, as well as some detail about the person. And this doesn't update automatically at the moment. So I wanted to create something that would allow it to update automatically without having to force the maintainers of this package to download and install some more complicated stuff. And GitHub Actions is perfectly uh, a good solution to that. So we can create actions which will run on like a cron schedule. So they'll run on a schedule that we define using a cron-like cron tab syntax. Um, and we'll see what that is. I'm not going to go into any of the detail about that, but we'll see it come out when we start asking ChatGPT for the work to do the work. So I'm going to start with something really simple. Let's just create a GitHub action that runs on cron every week. Now, this has got no specific detail about the problem that we're trying to solve. It's a very high level request. But let's see what it comes back with because it should be a good starting point. I'm going to skip this because it's going a bit slow today. OK, so here, let's break the script down so that we actually understand what's going on. This is a YAML file. So it's a simple definition file that gives us some data structure, um, which is what GitHub Actions uses. We've given the job a name, or in fact, the whole action, not the job. Um, we've told it when to run, so on and a specific schedule, and then we've got this cron schedule. And then it's each action is made up of jobs, and jobs are these whole groups of steps. So um, it's just called this my job. We could call it build, we could call it anything we want here. This is just a name that ChatGPT has used for us. We're then instructing which environment the jobs run on, so which operating system environment. And in this case, we're using one that's widely used and generally well available for GitHub Actions, Ubuntu latest. And then we specify the steps. So we give each step a name, this makes it easier to read the actions output. And then we also tell them what to do. So in some cases, you can use uh, kind of like packages for actions, bundled up work that's done elsewhere that we can just pull in. Or we can be explicit about what's involved in every step here. So in this one, where we tell it to run a script, it's just going to echo that value into the terminal of this Ubuntu machine um, container that it's going to spin up. So it's not doing anything fancy. It's not doing what we want it to do yet, but it's the start. The next thing we want to do is figure out what exactly is going on in this process so that we can imitate the process inside an action. So it looks like we want to do something with this update.php script, right? So here it is. It's quite a simple script. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail about this specifically because it doesn't necessarily matter. But the basics of it are that it's parsing the, the readme file for um, the usernames that, or those channel names and getting its follow account or finding that there isn't a follow account. And then it's updating each of those lines with the up the most up-to-date follow account, which it gets from the YouTube API here. We want this to run. We want it to run on a weekly basis. So what are we going to have to do in a new action to make that happen? Well, 
We haven't even created the action yet, but we can already see that this isn't doing enough. This isn't in fact doing anything that's related to this code base. So I want to ask ChatGPT to do a few changes to this. I want it to, I already know that I need an API key for YouTube and that's accepted here as just a variable that's passed into the script. That means that whoever runs this has to type this API key in manually and they obviously don't want it to be committed to the repository because they don't want somebody to abuse their API key. So that's a little problem we're going to have to come back and solve later on. But I just know that I need to somehow get an API key into this process in order for it to work. So I'm going to tell ChatGPT I need to pass an API key and see what it comes back with, right? Let's see what it says. I need to pass an API key into the script. How can I do that? I'll skip over this part as well. Okay, so now we can see that it's updated the step that runs the script and it's changed it a little bit more than I would like this time, but it's okay. It's just added some useful comments. Um, the key part is that it's added this environment key to the run a script step. So what's that doing? In GitHub Actions, we can set env for any of the steps that run in our job. And that allows us to bring in data from outside the action and pass it into the commands that we're running inside the step. And this is just exactly the environment that you'd expect from your operating system. So if you set an environment variable in your operating system in the terminal, and then you run a command, you'd expect the command to have access to that environment variable. And that's exactly what's going on here. So we're just passing it a key and a value. And we're saying the key is called API key. And we're setting the value to some special syntax that's made available by GitHub Actions. And it's this dollar squiggly brackets and then secrets dot and it's given it the name my API key. And we'll look at where that needs to go in a second. Uh, and then basically it's the same. So then it'll just run the script that we want to do. Fine. Cool. Okay. What's next? Well, if we assume that the script that's running in this step has now got the API key that it's needed to be in order to run this API call, then we're kind of done, aren't we? Not quite. So the thing that we want to do next is to allow the changes that this script is going to make to be committed back to the repository. In this case, the script is actually changing the readme file itself. We also have to acknowledge that the readme file could be changed by somebody else outside of the script. So there's a few things we want to consider, but we'll start with something simple. So I'm just going to tell ChatGPT I'm what is happening. The script will make changes to some of the files in the repo, which I would like to be pushed back to GitHub. How would I add that? Skipping. Okay, here we are. It's actually added two new steps. Let's look at them. So first of all, it's added this setup git step. And that seems to have given us some git configuration commands to run to make sure that the data, the metadata around the git commits that we're going to make is something appropriate. We could change those to whatever we want them to be, but these look sensible enough for now. And then it looks like it commits and pushes changes, a nice sensible name for the next step. And it's running three commands in quick succession. Add everything, commit with a message, and if it doesn't commit, it's just going to echo no changes to commit. And then it just pushes them. Now this works against the repository that we're working on. Um, we don't have to do anything special here, but you can see there's some notes about tokens and things. This is all dependent upon us 
working with the exact repository that this action is occurring on. If we needed this to go to take action on another repository, then we'd have a little bit more of a complicated workflow. But we're going to pass over this. We don't need the GitHub token or anything special here that by default actions run with enough um, credentials to be able to update the repository that they're running against. And it's given us some explanation, which is nice. Thanks, ChatGPT. Right, now this is okay. This will push back the changes to our main branch of this repository. And that could be all right. But as we said before, there could be changes being made to this file on another occasion by somebody else manually or from another PR or whatever. And if we then just try and push changes from our action, what's going to happen? Well, it could have a collision. We could have problems that need merging uh, and in some cases manually merging, which our GitHub action isn't going to be able to do for us, at least not until AI takes over the whole planet. We're kind of stuck if we just leave it here. This uh, action needs to create a pull request um, and it probably even needs to branch off so that we can create a pull request from a separate branch. So let's see how we would do that. I'm going to ask ChatGPT, chat how would I push the changes to a separate branch and create a PR? Right. It's actually more complicated than the original version that ChatGPT gave me for this earlier. But we'll go with this and get through it because I think this one is actually slightly better. So what's it added now? Well, we've got these extra steps that seem to have come in somewhere in between us running our script and the changes being committed and pushed back, which makes sense. So we're actually going to create a new branch. So it's given us a step that says define a branch and check out that branch. And then we're going to commit back and we're going to push our new branch to GitHub. And then we're going to create a pull request. So those seem like simple steps, but there's some complexity here, which we should break down. Let's see what's happening. ChatGPT has decided in the naming of the branch that rather than just doing a git checkout minus B and just some name, it's actually going to give us um, a variable name. So it's, allow it's set up this branch name equals changes and then the date, you know, year, month, day, looks like hours, minutes, and seconds to give us a really robust solution in this case, which is great. And it's outputting that to the GitHub env, which is a special file basically in the GitHub action, which keeps a store of um, temporary variables that we want to be able to use inside action. And then the next step, it uses that variable from the GitHub env directly in the git checkout minus b command. So that's quite a neat approach. Um, and I, I actually kind of like that. It's better than the version that it did for me earlier. Um, then it commits the changes again. So same as before, except it's different. This time we're saying instead of just git push, we're saying git push origin and this variable branch name. And then we're creating a pull request and it's using the GH um, CLI command tool that's available by default within GitHub Actions. So this is completely valid. GitHub PR create, and then the base branch is main, the head branch is the one that we've just created. We give it a title, we give it a body, and we can change these variables if we want to. Right. What next? Is there anything next? Well, obviously none of this yet is specific to our actual problem space. All it's done is given us a template basically for the kind of problem that we want to solve. It doesn't actually run the script that we want to run. It doesn't have access yet to the API key. It doesn't have anything named the way that we might want to name it. That's going to make sense for us but it's a start. 
So we could take this and we could create the YAML file in our repository just from this and make a few changes and it'd be working exactly as we would like. There's just one other thing that I'd like to see if I can figure out, which I'm not sure of. And I want to make this workflow work, work manually as well as on its schedule so that I can actually test it out without having to wait until Sunday at midnight, which for me now is almost a week away. So that's a bit too long for me to wait to find out that this isn't going to work. So I want to make it work manually. How do I do that? How can I make this workflow run manually? ChatGPT is thinking hard about this one. There it is, easy enough. Just add the workflow dispatch key to the on set. Um, and that is it. Once that's done, we can actually go into the repository. We can go into the actions. And if we had an action here, we'd have the list of actions available on the left-hand side, and it would be called weekly scheduled and manual action. And then we can click on that. And then there's a little drop down that we can use to select manual workflow run. Um, and there you have it. In just a few minutes, you've been able to create a really powerful GitHub action workflow file. You haven't had to write any code and that's it. It's done. That's cool. That's super fast. And yeah, it's the end of the world. So that's it. Just a quick example of how to use ChatGPT to create a GitHub action workflow. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I don't often do pre-recorded videos like this. I like to do live videos. So come and watch my latest live video, which is going to be happening at the end of this week, where I'll be streaming about building a Laravel product that I'm working. Hope to see you later. Have a great week.